Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am discussing how to make cheap clothing look a little bit more expensive. You guys know I love my high-low mix and I definitely love to splurge on my accessories, but at the same time, I feel like clothing is always such a no-brainer in terms of areas where you can save without really seeing the difference. I think it's fully possible to get the look that you want without breaking the bank in terms of clothing pieces. So in today's video, I thought I would share all of my tips and tricks. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. This video is kindly being sponsored by Karma, who you may know as Shop Tagger. They did recently change their name, but they're now known as Karma, and they are a game changer in terms of online shopping and saving money online. I have used this tool for gosh, I wanna say like four or five years now. And Calm is an app and Chrome extension that ensures you never miss a price drop or coupon code. It essentially allows you to save items to your Karma account and then it notifies you as soon as that item goes on sale. I do a lot of sales coverage, especially in the run up to Black Friday and Cyber Week. And Karma is often how I find out about those sales because they notify me before anyone else. So it genuinely is amazing. And as I mentioned, I've been using it for literally years. It's how I was able able to save money planning my wedding with all my bridal accessories is how I get notified now about so many of the sales I cover. So I will do a quick tutorial now to show you how it works. Okay, so this is what you see when you go on to Karma, and the website is Karma Now, but I will leave a link in the description section if you wanted to check it out. So all you do is you either sign up or in my case, log in because I already have an account. So this is what you see when you log in as your dashboard. And for me, the first thing that I'd recommend anyone doing if you're just getting used to Karma is to install the Chrome extension. I tend to do all my online shopping on my laptop anyway, and the Chrome extension not only makes it easier to save your items, but it also gives you extra functionality as well. So I would definitely recommend, it is super easy to do. You just click install, add to Chrome, and it is literally as simple as that. Once you've installed your Chrome extension, then it's really easy to navigate around. So this is the Karma dashboard, and over here you can see all the different line items. Under my items is where they collect all the items you've saved from all the different websites. So I have a complete mix here as always. So I have some Christmas home decor pieces, I have a coat that I have my eye on, some more luxury items, um, just a complete mix of everything. And these are all items that I'm gonna get notified about if they do go on sale or if they sell out and then come back in stock as well. Over here, you can also see my lists as well. So if you're into lists like I am, this is a great one because you can categorize everything. So I have a list of dresses here. So these are my favorite dresses that I keep an eye on. And then I have here super luxe pieces as well. So these are all the items that are a bit more on the luxury side that I'm hoping are going to go on sale or get some kind of discount soon. So you can really go in and categorize everything. I'm gonna show you quickly how exactly you can save items. So I'm here on Louise Via Roma. I'm just gonna find something to save. So let's go to view all under women. So love these Jean Vito Rossi boots very similar to my biker boots. I love the kind of sweater element. And as you can see, it pops up right here, which is why the Chrome extension is so great. So this actually allows you to earn cash back on your shopping. So you're actually earning money while shopping, which is just the best thing ever. But Karma also gives to a worthy cause as well. So it's kind of a win-win for everyone. Just click activate there. You also do have the little pop-up right here and it's really, really subtle. So you just click right there and then it pops up and you can choose exactly what color you want, you can choose what size, so I'm a 37 and a half. Choose when I wanna be notified, I always go for any price change. And then I can add it to a list if I want, so I'm gonna go for super luxe pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And then if I go back to Karma, you can see it's already been added. So it really is really instant and super easy. You can also get notifications any which way you want. So you can be notified as soon as those items do go on sale or come back in stock, or even now if there's a relevant coupon code as well. So you can get notifications for all three and you can choose whether you want that by email, by push notification on mobile. There's a whole range of different options. I go for them all because you guys know I love my sales, but it's completely flexible. And I also just quickly wanna show you here the discount code feature because I think this is probably one of my favorite new features that they've added. It is so great. So it just pops up with this coupons found and you click I feel lucky to see if there is one available. 
So as you can see, Karma has detected that there is a discount code available. So it's automatically applied that for me. So it's just saved me 126 pounds without me having to trial through the internet for discount codes, trying to find one that might work, just does it automatically. And it just means I instantly save money. One important thing to note though, is that this feature is only available on the Chrome extension. So if you did want to use the coupon code search feature, you do need to add the Chrome extension. Would highly recommend it has saved me so much money and it is the most useful thing. So as you can see, it is so easy to use and it's so unbelievably useful. And best of all, it is completely free as well. It's free to sign up, free to use. There is no cost to you whatsoever. So I will include the link for that in the description section. If you did want to check it out, would highly recommend. So my first tip is to be very, very aware of fabric and try to only go for fabrics that pass the crease test. Now my crease test I do with literally every single item that is a more flowy fabric that covers my bum. So here I'm talking about skirts and dresses, doesn't really apply as much to kind of jeans, um, but certainly anything flowy. What I do whenever I'm looking at something, whether that's in store or I'm receiving it in the mail, is I get a bunch of fabric where there are no current creases and I literally scrunch up like that and I wait a couple of seconds and then I release and then I see what the damage is after. And that will give you a really good idea about how it's going to wear during the day and if the creasing is going to be an issue. And the crease proof test is useful no matter how expensive the item is because for some reason this doesn't seem to be restricted to cheap clothing. I've seen so many expensive clothing pieces which really crease badly as well. Um, so this is a very pricey dress from Zimmerman and this is one of the only linen pieces in my closet because I almost always avoid linen because it does crease so badly. And again, it doesn't seem to matter how expensive the linen item is. If it creases, it's going to look a lot cheaper. So this one does a lot better than others. It still does crease, but this is pretty much the limit in terms of how far I'll go with linen and how much creasing I'm willing to tolerate. Anything more than this, and it's just a no-go. And it's such a simple thing to do just to do that crease test, just to check if it is going to wear well throughout the day. And that's an easy win in terms of cheap clothing, identifying the quality pieces. Linking in with that is the trusty steamer. I'm a firm believer that every single person should have one of these. I pretty much don't iron any clothes at all now. We have an iron and an ironing board, but this is way more effective, especially if you do have a lot of skirts and dresses. And it's also easier as well. You know, you don't have to get out a hot ironing board and it's such a faff. This is so easy. It heats up within seconds and you just go about your way steaming it and the finish is always amazing. Don't have to be expensive either. I've gone through a few different ones this is probably my favorite one to date just because it does heat up so quickly. I think this was like 30 pounds, so wasn't too much. There are always a ton to choose from. I generally speaking just go on Amazon and look for a top rated one and go from there. The reviews are always so helpful, but definitely a worthwhile investment in terms of keeping your clothes pristine and also making your life easier as well. My next tip is to really pay attention to how the fabric moves. I've spoken about this before, but it really is the biggest kind of giveaway when it comes to fabric, but it's also fully possible to find cheaper versions which have a beautiful flow and movement, and as a result, look way more expensive than they are. So I have two skirts here, both from ASOS, both fairly inexpensive, but one looks considerably cheaper than the other one, and that's because of how the fabric moves and flows. So this one, which I think looks a lot cheaper and was actually a little bit more expensive than the other one just doesn't really flow in quite the same way the drape isn't as nice it kind of crinkles a lot more the pleats are both simultaneously more defined and less defined in places and it just doesn't have that beautiful swish that you might expect from a pleated skirt if I contrast that with this skirt, which is one of my absolute favorites, I've worn this a ton and it was super inexpensive. It just moves in a really beautiful way. If you can see that it has a beautiful swish and it just drapes really beautifully. And that is what gives it that more expensive look. So if you're unsure, just kind of give it a little swish on a coat hanger and you'll be able to see the difference in terms of how elegantly something moves. 
two more examples of this are here. So this skirt is a Michael Kors skirt and it has very, very pretty movement indeed. I think this was just shy of 200 pounds. So obviously not a budget option, but a very, very pretty amount of movement. Whereas this skirt, which also has a very lovely amount of movement, swishes in a beautiful way, a really elegant pleat and drape. And this one was, I think, 18 pounds. So as you can see, like you can spend a lot and kind of get a similar effect. But if you really, really hunt, you can also find some bargain options which have a similarly elegant movement. My next tip is to add just one expensive thing and I really wanted to limit the number of tips like this in this video because clearly a video on how to save money, you don't want it to be full of tips so just get one expensive thing. But in this case, I do think it's worth stating because if you were able to save money on clothing and just adding one kind of luxury element, it really can transform your look. And an obvious way to do that is with a luxury bag. Obviously, I'm a big fan of a luxury bag and its ability to elevate your outfit it but they do tend to be more on the expensive side because it is such a substantial thing. It is, however, much easier to get the look for less with still a very, very luxurious accessory. So my two favorite pieces here are the brooch and the belt, and I think they're both so incredibly underrated in their ability to completely transform your outfit. The brooch is fantastic because not only is it a great deal cheaper than a luxury bag or a pair of shoes, but it's also very transferable. So you can literally transfer this from outfit to outfit, and it's gonna go with most things. You know, you can wear it on top of a t-shirt, you can also pop it on a sweater, a blazer, a coat, a scarf if you want to. It can really go on everything throughout every single season, and it's so easy just to undo and pop on something else, and you could literally wear it on every single outfit, and it will make everything look so much more fancier than it is. And my other favorite accessory is my trusty belts, and I have a few different options because I love them so much, and it's a favorite styling trick of mine just to go for something very simple like an inexpensive pleated skirt from ASOS usually, a simple cami or tank top, and then pop on a belt on top. Usually the outfit is very, very inexpensive, but the belt really does just elevate it and make it look so much fancier than it is. So regardless of whether you're more of a jeans girl or you like your skirts, you can find a belt that will work with your outfits. And if you get the right one, I'd always recommend them in neutral colors because of that. You will really get the cost per wear down and you will elevate so many otherwise very simple outfits. My next tip is to get things tailored. And I have seen a lot of tips around the tailoring point where you know people in articles recommend to get everything tailored. And for me, that's just not realistic. Like I'm just not going to get everything tailored. But in some cases you get more bang for your buck. And also in some cases it just makes more sense to do so. So one area I would definitely avoid getting things tailored is sweaters and blouses or tops because in my opinion, it's just not necessary. You can find very nice sweaters and tops without having to get them tailored because that's also an extra expense and it's also extra time as well. So I just don't think it's necessary. There are plenty of really inexpensive blouses, sweaters, tops, that sort of thing, which are gonna fit you great right off the bat and aren't gonna require tailoring. That said, I do think that there are some areas where it is 100% worth it to get something tailored if you can't find something inexpensive that fits you just right. My two go-tos here are blazers and coats. The tailoring and cut of blazers and coats in general outerwear is really important. So that's where it's really worthwhile if you do find an outerwear piece that you love but doesn't have quite the right fit, it is 100% worth it to go to a tailor and get it fitting you just so. My next tip is to stop washing your items so much. And I know this is gonna be a controversial one, but I just don't think it's necessary to wash your items every single time you wear them, unless you get something on them. I do a lot of spot cleaning, especially on some of my favorite or even fancier items. I don't wanna constantly be washing them because that does fade the color and faded items, it doesn't matter how expensive they are, will always look so much cheaper. So I would definitely say if you can get away with spot cleaning, so so that is, you know, if you get a mark on something, sponging it out rather than washing the whole thing, I would definitely always recommend doing so. When I do wash my items, I always really take care in terms of how I treat them. So this goes for anything delicate or even just my favorite items. I either do a gentle wash in the machine. I actually hand wash a lot of items myself just to make sure that they aren't getting ruined in the machine. And again, this especially goes for more delicate pieces or items that I'm just really attached to that I will just cry 
if they got ruined. So I would definitely recommend that. And I would also say like there are a lot of different kind of luxury cleaning products for hand washing and things like that. It's not necessary. You don't need to spend like 15, 20 pounds on a special kind of clothing wash or clothing detergent. Not necessary at all. Don't be fooled by Martin gimmicks. It is literally just a gimmick. You can just use a regular washing powder and achieve a very, very good result. That will also help preserve the life of your items. My next tip is to not be wedded to the size on the label. So you may have in your head that you're a certain size or want to be a certain size, but that really means nothing in today's retail world because every single retailer seems to have their own sizing conventions. So one retailer size six could be another retailer's size 10 and it just makes no sense at all. So I would say don't be wedded to your size, use it as a guide certainly, but be prepared to size down or size up appropriately. So my two examples, I have here. This is a sweater I got from Manga recently. I would typically go for a size extra small in a sweater. This one I went for a size small just because I wanted that slightly more oversized look and I wanted to wear it with leggings and skinny jeans and boots and that was just the look I was going for. Extra small probably would have fit but it wouldn't have achieved the look that I wanted. On the other hand, my favorite sinker set blazers, I really, really sized down and I actually went for a double zero in this and I'm not a double zero in literally anything else. But with blazers especially, I always find that the cut of the sleeve is so important and an overly wide sleeve can look a lot frumpier and a lot cheaper as well. So that is the number one thing I look at whenever I try on a blazer or a coat. I immediately look at the sleeve to see how wide it is and I may size down accordingly. It's a surefire way to get a very, very streamlined look, and it's an easy way to make a slightly cheaper blazer look a bit more expensive. And my final tip is to go for classic colors. And I think this is such an important one to keep in mind because as fun as trends are, I think your safest bet is always to go for really tried and tested color combinations. It's the same reason that, you know, as many neon shades as Balenciaga wants to do, it's always gonna make the items look a little bit cheaper as a result. Whereas you can go for some really beautiful options which don't cost the bank, which have that really timeless, very luxurious element to them because of the shades you're getting them in. So my two favorite examples, the camel skirt I showed earlier. I love this shade, it's such a pretty tone. It's nice for summer. It's also really pretty for autumn, winter as well. And as I mentioned, it was less than 20 pounds and has been a favorite in my closet over the past two years as a result of that. Another favorite is one of my pleated skirts from ASOS. It's this beautiful burgundy color. I've lost count of the amount of times I've worn the skirt. I just think it's such a rich, lovely shade, especially for this time of year. And it goes so easily with so many other items in my wardrobe. And it's that much easier to achieve a fancier look because these are such classic timeless shades. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it, you found it useful. As mentioned, I will include the link if you wanted to check out Karma in the description section below. It is the most useful thing if you do do a lot of online shopping, especially around this time of year in the run up to Black Friday and all the amazing sales coming up. If you have any questions for me, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have an incredible tip that you also wanna share, I would love to read it. Anything around kind of saving money and making an expensive clothes look that little bit fancier, let me know in the comment section. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.